There's levels to everything in life. Levels to Candy Crush. Levels to your OnlyFans subscription of that anime e-girl that you really like. And of course, there are levels to MMA fandom, but what are they? Today, I'm going to share with you my very own seven levels of MMA fandom that I believe encapsulate the journey of nearly every single mixed martial arts fan. We'll start at the top with level one, the casual. You were a pay-per-view virgin, and maybe it was a Conor McGregor highlight video that popped your cherry, or maybe you were just surfing the channels and you saw two shirtless guys trapped in a cage and thought, I don't know what's happening here, but I usually skip this part. Regardless of how you started watching MMA, the key thing is that now you're here and you're part of a wonderful community now that will not welcome you at all. Although at this point you have watched a few pay-per-views, you have absolutely no idea what's going on at any time. You may only look forward to the co-main event or, or the main event at this point, and you lean heavily on the amazing and always accurate commentary from Michael Bisping and Daniel Cormier to guide you through the action. Even though you yourself have no fighting experience whatsoever, you've started just shadow boxing anything and everything in your vicinity. Family members, animals, lamps, doesn't matter. You're gonna shadow box it. You might even shadow box your girlfriend from time to time, but who are we kidding? We both know that the closest thing that you have to a girlfriend is that pocket pussy you keep under your bed that you'll inevitably shadow box later tonight. You also probably know a few fighters names up to this point and you have a favorite fighter named Conor McGregor. Outside of that, you address everybody as that one Brazilian guy with blonde hair or that Russian guy with the chin strap beard and literally nobody knows what the fuck you're talking about and that's okay. People who have watched the sport for years constantly refer to you as a casual because you're always going on and on about how Sean O'Malley could easily take Brock Lesnar in his prime, but don't get offended by that. No matter how much knowledge you do have or don't have, they're just always going to call you a filthy casual. Also, be prepared that anytime you do start talking about a fighter or even remotely criticizing them, someone will appear out of nowhere and go, oh, but you could never beat them in a fight. The real thing that's important is that now you're here and you're one of us. Level two, ascended casual. Just like when Goku said that there's a level above Super Saiyan, there too is a level above a casual. An ascended casual is truly what it means to go further and beyond. If you're at this level, congrats. You've graduated from shadowboxing your cat to knowing the difference between an armbar and a Kimura now. You're also no longer content with just main events. You know now that the prelims is where the real action is. In this stage, your MMA knowledge starts to truly deepen. You're beginning to recognize not only the famous faces, but also rising stars. You've branched out from your love of Conor McGregor, and now names like Valentina Shevchenko and Israel Adesanya aren't just random fighters to you anymore. You're also starting to pick up some MMA lingo as well. Takedown, ground and pound, guillotine are all things that you've thrown into your vocabulary. You've started responding to things with, oh yeah, I saw it on Rogan, assuming that everyone around you watches JRE, and luckily for you, every fatherless MMA fan has adopted Joe Rogan as their father, so they know exactly what you're talking about. Not only do you listen to Joe Rogan now, but you've started consuming MMA content everywhere, and maybe you listen to other podcasters like Ariel Hawani, for example. Something has been bothering you though. Now that you've been watching alpha males beat each other up for a decent amount of time, you've started to realize something, and that something is that you're extremely fragile, and you are nothing like the alpha males that you watch on TV. To combat this, you started thinking of innovative ways to try and make yourself look tougher, and what you came up with is trying to give yourself cauliflower ear by rubbing your head vigorously on hard surfaces in hopes that if someone sees your cauliflower ear, they'll go, oh no, I'm not gonna with that guy. When in reality, the only people who will ever be saying that they're not going to with you are women. But soon, none of that will matter because you're going to fully accept that you were never really straight in the first place. Level three. The let me bang bro, bro. That clip of Julian Lane saying let me bang bro perfectly captures how you feel right now. As a casual, you knew nothing. And then as an ascended casual, you tried to understand different aspects of MMA and you were coming around to the idea that grappling could be exciting to watch. But now you realize no matter how hard you do try to convince yourself you like watching the boys wrestle, it's just not happening. You just want to watch dudes bang. And because of that, you've started to indulge in some of the greatest bang fests known to man. You've developed a deep, deep appreciation for the art of striking, and now as you watch, every single punch and kick thrown is just poetry in motion. You've probably watched some old pride fights, and maybe you've even gone as far as watching some glory kickboxing. And now all you can think about when you watch MMA is 
God, I hope neither of these guys starts crotch sniffing. Because of your newfound love for striking, you've even dabbled in watching a little bit of boxing, only to realize that these guys hug more in one round than your dad hugged you in your entire life. You've also developed some sort of phobia against the Dagestani chin strap beard because you know anytime you see one of those guys, you're in for a boring fight. Even the thought of Brazilian jiu-jitsu or wrestling makes you want to commit war crimes, but it's not because you're not sexually aroused, you definitely are, but you're just not entertained. You fully accept that you live for the thrill of the knockout or the symphony that is a, a well-timed uppercut or the ballet of a spinning back fist. As you ascend to higher levels of fandom, who knows, maybe you'll come to appreciate the ground game, but for right now in your kingdom of knuckle sandwiches, stand up as king. Level four, MMA meme connoisseur. Because there are so many fights that end up going to the ground, you have had a lot of free time on your hands. When a fight hits the mat, you immediately start scrolling through Reddit or Twitter. But don't be fooled. It's not that you're wasting time. You're actually studying. Studying the meme culture that is MMA. At this point, your knowledge of MMA memes has become encyclopedic. From the Just Bleed guy to the more modern Stockton Slap, you know how every single meme originated and where it came from. You've also watched Mixed Martial Academics, Iceberg, and Mythical Fighter videos front to back, so you know everything that there is to know on the evolution of MMA memes. You've incorporated this knowledge into your everyday life as well. When you get rejected on Tinder, you think it's really funny to whisper to yourself, oh, he's hurt. And that serves not only as a coping mechanism, but it's a tie to a higher power that is the MMA meme gods. Because of your dedication in your circle, you're the go-to guy for all things memes. You rush to your Discord or your group chat with new memes on the daily, acting like you're the one that actually made them, but in reality, you just copy and pasted them from another guy who copy and pasted them onto Twitter. As an expert and an MMA meme connoisseur, you've come to realize that these memes are far more than just jokes. They're the heartbeat that connect mixed martial arts fans across the entire globe. Level five, the grappling snob. Now that you've been through your funny stage, it's time to get serious again. You've done some soul searching and some deep reflecting and you've come to terms with the fact that you know absolutely nothing about half the sport and that half is the ground game. Yeah, at first you thought you only like to watch guys stand and bang, but remember earlier when I said that you were never really straight in the first place? Well. That's where that whole thing comes full circle. To fill in your lack of knowledge, you've decided to put in the time and try and give grappling a chance. Maybe you yourself started doing some BJJ, or maybe you started looking for videos from experts to break down what it is that you've been missing out on. And boy, you've found a real appreciation for grappling now. The same way that you loved knockouts and stand-up wars, you now find yourself mesmerized by the chess match that is the ground. You are no longer that guy that groans as soon as fighters hit the mat. Instead, you just moan. You have fully transformed yourself into the grappling snob and you scoff at anybody who can't appreciate the beauty of a perfectly executed arm bar or the finesse of a rubber guard. You started saying things like omoplata and Ezekiel choke in everyday conversation and all you get back is blank stares from your less enlightened friends. You could write a romance novel on the dominance of Khabib's top game or the wizardry behind Damian Maia's jiu-jitsu. For you, a fight is no longer just about who's left standing. It's now about the art and science of control, technique, and leverage. You've set yourself apart in a cookie cutter MMA world where everybody's just a hillbilly that wants to watch men hit each other in the face. You are truly different and you practice your jiu-jitsu every single night with your boyfriend and the Noguera brothers. Level six, Sofa Sensei. As a person who's now well-versed in both the stand-up and ground game, you've come to realize that absolutely nobody knows what they're talking about, except you. Listening to DC and Michael Bisping try and break down a fight makes you violently ill. Due to that fact, you now only watch MMA gurus fight companions for commentary like the cultured man that you are. Your living room isn't just your living room anymore. On fight nights, it transforms into your dojo of wisdom. You're the one sitting there sweating, yelling at fighters as if you're actually in their corner. Your friends look at you in disgust and roll their eyes, but deep down, you know that they're impressed. After all, who needs Joe Rogan and John Anik when you're there to break down every single feint, submission attempt, and takedown? You've got a spreadsheet laid out that breaks down each fighter's strengths and weaknesses and the holes in their game plans. You often start sentences with, if I were their coach, knowing full well the closest thing that you've ever had to a fight is the altercation you had with Uber Eats support chat. But none of that matters because in your head, 
You're the mastermind behind every potential upset and the architect of champions. Your Twitter feeds just become an endless stream of unsolicited fight advice and bold predictions. You also have a habit of tweeting at fighters after they lose, telling them what they should have done as you sip on your beer and adjust your imaginary black belt. And your social media activity doesn't end there because half the fun is engaging with other online experts in online warfare. You spit straight venom at other online experts using words like fight IQ and octagon control. You have truly reached the pinnacle of armchair expertise. Level seven, the fight messiah. You've now realized that every level of fandom up to this point was just a stepping stone on your path to enlightenment. Twitter battles with people who don't go outside are a thing of the past for you now. There's just absolutely no reason to engage in such low level behavior because you've come to realize the true meaning of life and the universe, which is fighting is love and fighting is life. It does not matter what combat sport it is at this point because you're always going to watch. You're waking up at 3 a.m. to watch Gabby Garcia fight a grandma in Japan. You're setting reminders for underground Muay Thai bouts in Thailand. You know the entire lineup of a thumb wrestling event happening halfway across the world. And yes, you're even a fan of Power Slap and you truly believe that it's going to be an Olympic sport by the year 2032. As the fight messiah, you don't just watch combat sports, you absorb them and you see the beauty in every single aspect. You may watch an obscure Uzbekistan wrestling match and with no words at all, you suddenly realize why it is that they wear those funny hats. You may see two guys in a clinch and you realize it's not a hug fest at all. It's a complex dance of power and dexterity. Maybe most importantly of all, you've completely eradicated the C word from your entire vocabulary. Your advice to newcomers now comes with a sage-like nod and a distant gaze into the distance as you give them advice. You say things like, the path of the fist is the path to the heart, and they just awkwardly nod at you and hand you money and tell you to please get out of the intersection. As the fight messiah, you've found peace in the chaos that is combat sports because you know that you live for the fight and the fight lives for you.